In this video we're going to take a look at five of my top long and triple jump conditioning exercises that you should be doing at this time of the training season. That's between the indoor and the outdoor season. Now these drills have to have a high power of value and a high relationship to the technical needs of triple jump and long jumping. They all have a high power input and an emphasis as I shall explain on eccentric capacity. This one is more specifically aimed at the long jump, although it can have a benefit for triple jumpers as well. It's a double loading of the penultimate step takeoff drill. First takeoff starts from a box with a run on. Drop down very quickly onto the penultimate step and step very quickly into the takeoff to take off. Land, step again into another takeoff, so that's after three steps again, making sure that you do the penultimate step movement again. So you're going to carry a lot of speed through from the first takeoff and then you've got to cope with that on the second. The drop from the box on the first takeoff enables the jumper to really feel the pressure and the need to go flat footed and then transition quickly. They're also going to get an eccentric benefit, a loading eccentrically on the block when they get down onto that penultimate step. So there's also a conditioning benefit to that as well. The next drill you're going to see benefits both long and triple jumpers and that uses medicine balls and as you're seeing the guys are performing two hops and a throw of the ball from a bench so there's a drop jump aspect to it as well. Now the ground contacts are going to be slower for this particular drill and that makes them particularly suited to developing a base of power for more explosive plyometrics. Also the contact may be more akin to those in the triple jump albeit I still think they're going to be a little bit slower than what's required. We use these medicine ball drills and others similar to provide a base of power for more explosive plyometric exercises. Thirdly, we've got the hurdle jump and platform combination bounds. Drop down from a low platform over a hurdle, falls onto a platform over a hurdle, so on and so forth. There are a number of objectives of this particular drill. Firstly, we want a very quick ground contact time from the platform and then over the hurdle, i.e. the drop jump contact. Then on landing from the hurdle, we need to move forwards quickly onto the platform to keep the speed going throughout the drill. As I said in my ground contact video, link on screen now, it's all about trying to maximize the rate of force development for ground contacts and not training beyond a range that is going to have a detrimental effect on your jump performance. If the hurdles, for example, are too high, then that can slow the contacts and reduce the transference into actual event performance, which at this time of the training year, you just don't want. The fourth drill that you're going to see is a sequence of down box drop jumps. So as you can see, the guys are leaping from one box to another to another, and these are lower. So again, we're looking at the braking forces, similar to the penultimate step drill, and the eccentric transference. So when you drop down, you're going to have to brake before you move forwards into the next contact. But we're also looking for the speed. The fifth drill we're doing at the moment is more of a running drill and that involves holding a medicine ball at arm's length and running with it. Now that is going to strengthen the core, it's also going to throw the emphasis onto the legs and in particular the hips in order to spin the legs round which is crucial for developing sprint speed. Also the fact that the ball is out in front of the body is going to bring down more force into the ground contact so that again is going to develop eccentric capacity to a degree as well. As you may have picked up on Developing eccentric ability is something that is key for me in this particular training phase as if you can better break and return energy when jumping then you're going to jump further. So if you can absorb and return force better coming out of the hop and into the step in the triple jump as an example. So training eccentrically and emphasizing eccentric movements is a crucial facet of my training between the indoor season and the outdoor season. Good luck with any competitions that you've got coming up and of course with your training. And if you're interested I've written an article on the new long jump proposed rules for Athletics Weekly and that's going to be in the shops pretty soon and of course I'm pretty contrary to that idea. I say of course as the majority of jumps coaches and jumpers are. What do you think about it? 
If you've got any comments, then do leave them in the section below as well. And if you're interested in the free lap timing system, accurate to two one thousandths of a second and extremely portable, then do drop me a message. I've had quite a few coaches contact me talking about or referring me rather to various issues that they have with some of their jumpers. Now obviously I can't answer all of them. I try to as much as I can in these videos, but there are much more detailed analyses in the coach athlete videos in the members area of the channel. There are now over 40 videos that deep dive into the subject matters that will hopefully make you a better coach. So do head over to the channel's homepage and click on the membership button to see the coach athlete offering.